Other nice little changes. I said they didn't do much to the bin. One thing they have done is that if you're in icon mode here, you can now come down to this little icon here and choose how to sort the icons. So you can stick it in the same order as the list view, or you can say, well, let's do it by, I don't know, video usage, or by comment, or by media type, or whatever. Just a nice thing. You can rearrange these nicely inside the bin, which didn't work as well before. Another nice new thing is the safe areas. If I just click on the button to bring up the safe areas, you can see I've now got some extra lines in here warning me of the safe areas when I'm doing a 4x3 image from a 16x9 timeline. We've got some new effects. So let's just pop into here and I'm going to type in clip and it brings up the clip name effect, which basically puts the name of the clip up on screen. It's a bit like the time code effect, which put time code on there. This puts the name of it, which you can shove wherever you feel like, change the size of it, all that sort of thing. Rename the clip and you'll notice there it renames it to whatever the name of the clip is there. You've even got the option to ignore what it's called on the timeline and call it whatever the master clip was. These are the sort of things you use mainly to send off an edit to somebody with some hints on screen about which clips should go where, just in case all the other EDLs and AAFs and everything else fail. The other new effects that we've got are called Lumetri Looks. In CS6, if you bought the production premium, you would get a program called SpeedGrade, which is Adobe's grading program. SpeedGrade has been quite considerably improved with the new version, which I'm not going to talk about here. What you do have, though, is the ability to use some of the SpeedGrade looks inside of Premiere. So down here, you can see Lumetri looks. Lumetri is the engine that runs SpeedGrade. So they've now put that into Premiere, which means if you create a look in SpeedGrade, you can bring it into Premiere or you can use some looks they've already got. So there are cinematic looks, you know, typical bleach bypass effects. You notice you've got a little thumbnail there showing them off. Grab hold of any of them, drag them onto the clip, and you can see it's changed the look of the clip. So it's a bit like good old fashioned magic bullet movie looks. You can choose any of these and just grab it and drag it on to the clip and click the play button and it'll play it for you. Now you'll notice that I've ended up there with two Lumetri looks added into that particular clip because that's what I told you to do. These are the presets. You can click on this little tick box here and then you can go off and find some look that you've created yourself. Now, I haven't got any looks that I've created myself so I'm not going to do that. But it does mean if you get to learn speed grade, instead of having to render the footage out of speed grade, you can save the look and then just load it into Premiere and lo and behold, Premiere will have that color correction added to it. To get into speed grade, you've still got center speed grade. It was introduced in CS6. And we're hoping that more stuff will be added in. But right now, this is the first major step. It's the ability to have a look that's been created in speed grade and then throw it onto a clip. The other new effects we've got are on the audio side. So open up audio and you've got the same kind of range of effects that we've had before, but we do have some new ones. Anything that says legacy is the old premiere one. If there's another thing, like the compressor, this is a new compressor as compared to the old one. So dump it onto a clip, open it up, and you'll see a compressor which, if you're used to Audition, is exactly the one that we can use in Audition. Basically, there are a couple of nice audio effects inside of Audition which now work directly in Premiere. Now, obviously, if you're subscribing to the whole CC suite, you'll have Audition as well anyway, and Audition is still better for sound stuff. But one of the things that's happened to Audition with the CC versions is Audition is now 64-bit, whereas in Premiere Pro CS6, it was only 32-bit. It means a lot of nice things for Audition. It can access more memory and so on and so on. But it also means you can now share more stuff between Premiere and Audition because they're both 64-bit. So Premiere has nicked some of Audition's effects. If I were to come into the preferences, you can also see under audio, there's a new audio plugin manager where you can get it to scan for any extra VST plugins that you've got, or you can deliberately add some in yourself. And of course, you can apply these effects on a track level. So I'm just gonna pop in here. If you ever use this in CS6, you know that the list went off the screen, so they've tidied it up a bit and put them in sensible sections. And you know, I can strip a multi and compressor on there, right click, edit, change some settings, and I tend to use this when I'm doing tutorials to kind of e try and even out the volume between various clips. I put a compressor on the entire track and it sort of smooths out the volume levels. 